So let's talk about combustion chambers. But for the purposes of this video, let's forget everything we know about combustion chambers. Because in this context, none of that applies. So forget about quench, forget about valve size, forget about valve shrouding, forget about compression ratio, forget, forget about all of that stuff. None of that makes any difference in this context. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Like a lot of systems in a car, there's more than one process occurring in any given area of an engine or a car. And a cylinder head is no different. When we think of cylinder heads, we think of spark plug location, CC, you know, for size, compression ratio, valve size, valve shrouding, all of these different elements. But there's an aspect of the cylinder head of the combustion chamber that is never talked about, but it's like really important. It's, it's key, it's crucial. And it starts at the camshaft. The camshaft has a direct bearing on combustion chamber style. So let me explain how this works now. Every four cycle engine incorporates a, a period of its cycle where both the intake and the exhaust valve are open at the same time. That's called the overlap period. So the purpose of the overlap period is to take some of the exhaust gas, or, or I should say take the pulse of the exhaust gas, and use it to initiate the intake into the combustion chamber. So and, and here's where this is really important. And like I said, it's never talked about. But let's look at, come over here for a second. So looking at one cylinder of this engine, there's only one period of time when the tip of the induction system, whatever it happens to be, and the tip of the exhaust system are completely connected. One path through the whole package. And that's during the overlap period. So what's happening is the exhaust valve is closing, the intake valve is opening, the piston is at top dead center. And during that period of time that those valves are open, the combustion chamber is at its smallest size because the piston is at top dead center. The pulse of exhaust is working its way out and behind this high velocity exhaust pulse is a void, a vacuum. And that vacuum during that period of overlap is allowed to pull the initial charge through the intake system. So that's where the magic happens. That's right now all camshaft timing, like here's how, here's how crucial this is. All camshaft timing is based on that overlap period. If you're advancing or retarding a camshaft, let's say, you're moving the overlap period forward or backwards in relation to the piston position. If you've ever taken an engine just a regular engine and try to run it with no exhaust system at all, no manifolds, no headers, no nothing, just, just a bare port. You'll see you can barely even get the thing to start. It'll, if it runs at all, if you're lucky enough to get it to run at all, it's just gonna like just sputter and, and no power, no nothing. And that's because there's no pulse, there's no exhaust pulse and that void behind the pulse helping to initiate the intake charge. So the cylinder never gets full enough to actually make power. That's how crucial this is. So now let's go back to the combustion chamber or the cylinder head here. And the reason, the reason I'm even going into this now is because I'm, I'm building a, a, another 318 and I want this to be like a maximum output 318. And I'm using 360 heads, 340, 360 heads because I, I, I want the bigger ports and the bigger valves. But I don't want to go in a Magnum style head. I want to stick with an LA style head. So one of the problems we have here is that LA style heads, like this one right here, this is a 318 head, LA style heads are open combustion chamber. So this area right here is known as a quench pad. And in this case, it, there is no quench. It's an open chamber, meaning that the deck is at one height and this pad here is at another height, and it's about 90 thousandths of an inch or so, or thereabouts. If this was a closed chamber head, this quench pad would be flush with the deck surface. So now when the piston is at top dead center, 
everything except right here is closed off. And when that overlap period happens, the exhaust valve is closing, the intake valve is opening, it's directed much closer, right? So with the open chamber, as that exhaust valve is closing, that pulse is pulling from all around here. It's weakening the signal to the intake side. And that's why the highest performance cylinder heads always have closed combustion chambers. Most, most, the biggest reason that automakers went to these open style chambers in the late 60s, the early 70s, was due to emissions, because there's less emission, lower emissions, with the open style, cha the open chamber style head. But now, before I get into what I'm doing with my head, let's just talk about combustion chambers and their relationship to this overlap period. So, the gold standard, and it's not true, the gold standard of combustion chambers is the hemispherical combustion chamber, the, the hemi head. And this is a, a Buell motorcycle, Harley Davidson Buell, Hemi combustion chamber. And it's very, very similar to the Chrysler. And I'm gonna explain the, the evolutionary differences in a minute. But this design goes back to 1901. Peugeot was the first, the first company to actually incorporate a hemispherical combustion chamber into an engine. When Chrysler adopted the concept, they had used it in their different tank engines and airplane engines, but when they adapted it for road use, the whole purpose of it was to get, the main purpose of it, was to get the centralized spark plug. Because when you've got a, a more centralized spark plug, like you've got here, the flame front starts at the center and works its way out. It's less prone to detonation. On a wedge style engine, the spark starts here and it has to work its way across the field. So you can have a pressure spike at this stage, at this section, and that will compete against a flame front and you've got detonation. With the Hemi, that's cut way in half. The closer you can get the spark plug to the center of the action, the less chance there is. So the original version of the Chrysler Hemi was literally, and, and, and all of the Hemis that came before that, were literally just a closed, just a, a dome, a, a hemisphere, half a circle. Those engines were not originally designed for performance. The original 331 Chrysler was, I mean, it was a seven and a half to one compression, uh, single exhaust, two valve carburetor engine. It wasn't even considered to be a performance engine. The purpose of going to the hemispherical combustion chamber was that they could run down the line a little higher compression and more ignition lead and not have detonation. Because back then, just like today, fuel quality was all over the map. So you had to tune engines from the factory very, very, very conservatively in order to make sure that no matter where they went with this car and whatever weather conditions, they weren't going to get into detonation. And that's where the hemispherical combustion chamber became the thing. It was only a few years later that they started to actually use them in performance. From the beginning of the, of the Hemi program, there was a performance aspect to it, but it was secondary to road worthiness. The reason those engines worked from a performance standpoint was just the simple in and out nature of the combustion chamber. You could have more direct ports and a more in and out motion to the flow than you could with, because obviously it's gonna come in the intake here, come straight across, out the exhaust and out. Whereas on a wedge, it's gotta come in, make a turn and then go this way. And that's why the Hemi had an advantage, a performance advantage. As as performance technology increased, manufacturers went away from the true hemispherical combustion chamber. When they released the 426 Hemi, at the time, in 1964 and 1965, it had a performance advantage, but mostly because of the bigger ports and the bigger valves, and that straight through flow, other engines didn't have. The wedge engine, the, the, the uh, forget about the wedge engine, well, your yeah, wedge engines, like the tunnel port Ford, or the, uh, or the Rat Chevy, the big block Chevy, still, had, they were limited in port size and they, were, they didn't have that straight through. But evolution showed that when you closed down the combustion chamber, you gave a better signal to the intake side through the exhaust during that period of overlap. And so you see that all of the hemispherical combustion chamber 
changes, the evolutionary changes, all had to do with closing down the combustion chamber. And the Boss 429 Ford is the perfect example of that. Because the Boss 429, in addition to having a slight kick to the chamber where everything is in, in a direct line, the slight angle promotes swirl, so you get better combustion out of that. But mostly, they close down the combustion chambers by adding quench pads on either side, like this Buell has and close down the chamber like this. So now, during that period of overlap, the exhaust valve has a more direct pull on the intake. It only has to focus on this area right here to do that job during overlap. Now you talk about today in the world of, you, let's look at ultimate performance engines. Let's look at ultimate performance normally aspirated and ultimate performance artificially aspirated. Because everything we're talking about here right now really only applies to normally aspirated engines. Once you put a supercharger or a turbocharger on it and you're forcing the mixture through, that pull from the exhaust doesn't really matter anymore. That's why blown engines, supercharged engines can get away with zoomy headers and normally aspirated engines need some sort of collector to help unify that pulse. And that, that's the whole point of the collector. The whole point of, of, of having the correct length and diameter collector and primary tube and all that, the whole purpose of that is to create the pull through the intake during that period of overlap. Like, nobody really ever talks about this stuff, but that's why it exists. It's, it's all based around overlap. So if you look at the ultimate incarnations of engines, your supercharged engines that flow huge amounts of liquid are all based on the Chrysler Hemi design, which is a dead combustion chamber. It's just a dome. But that's the best tool for that particular job. It's just a sewer. You just, you're just blowing stuff through, capturing it, and, and sending, it out, sending it out the exhaust. If you look at, let's say, a pro stock type of engine, they're all based off of your Chevy style twisted wedge engines. And they all have combustion chambers that are completely closed down. So that this way, every, every bit of that pulse, every bit of that influence from the exhaust has a direct effect on the intake. So that's what I'm doing with, with these heads that I'm working on. I says, I, I don't want to go in a Magnum head. I want to stick with an LA head. So when I actually do start working on it, I'm not ready to start working on it yet because I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with this side of the combustion chamber. But what we're, the, the idea here is going to be to take this chamber and close it down, just like, just like this, and create a situation where during that overlap period, I've got the most direct shot between the exhaust and the intake for the strongest, cleanest pull and the best cylinder filling early as the piston's coming down. Because that's what you're trying to do here. That's the main accomplishment, is to, as the piston begins its trip down, it's already got, before it even starts pulling, it's already got flow coming in behind it. So you get more efficient, more efficient cylinder filling this way. So like I said, I'm, I'm not ready to start actually welding on the heads because I'm not sure how I want to handle this part of the chamber yet. But that's why we're talking about that. It's the part of the combustion chamber that nobody ever talks about because, you know, it has nothing to do with combustion. You know, everybody thinks of the combustion chamber as like an afterthought thing. But this is like an entire secret life that it has. Yeah? And it's just if you're, if you're curious about this sort of thing, start looking at pictures of combustion chambers. Look at different types of engines and the different situations that they operate under and look at what the combustion chamber is or how they're configured in their highest examples. So you look at a top fuel motor, look at a pro stock motor, look at a Formula One motor, look at all of these different combustion chambers, and you'll see, because you can, you can make any shape, you can form any shape with the top of a piston to fill in voids if compression is the only thing that you're after. So when you, when you deliberately start closing down the chamber to highlight just the valves and the spark plug, well, at that point, what you're doing is you're directing flow from the exhaust to the intake, and it has nothing to do with compression. Okay. I hope that got your wheels turning, right? I don't know if you got anything out of that, but this is the kind of stuff that keeps me up at night. I'll see you tomorrow.